these niggas fever they never seen before. Children, learn it. Learn and learn good. Bitch, I'm making statements. I'm a star in the hood. Fresh Art International presents Art Talk. Conversations about creativity in the 21st century. I'm Kathy Bird, Fresh Art producer, and today I'm speaking with Frédéric Nozécil, a French photographer based in Paris. Fred is going to tell us about Men in Heels, a new photography project featuring an elusive American subculture. When Fred came to the U.S. for a five-month residency this year, he was looking for Omar, an iconic character from The Wire, a renowned American TV series. When he came here, Fred was looking for Omar, you know, that character from the television series The Wire. And why did that character interest you, Fred? Omar, in a way, in the show, is an icon. He's a very modern icon for me. He's a man who is living in the ghettos, um, stealing drugs from the drug dealers and the gangs. And he has a partner who is a man. And that makes uh, the total difference. Uh, not, I'm not, I was not interested in the Robin Hood, but in a way, uh, it's a full modern character of a male living in a very hostile environment, decided, uh, deciding sorry, to control um, his identity and he want, what, what he wants to be as a man in life. It doesn't refer to any codes, to any social codes, to anything of the gangs, of the ghettos, of the black culture, of the homosexual culture. It does uh, refer to what he wants for himself in life. He defines his own identity and literally in the show, um, you never know from what street is going to show up. And that is the best metaphor for uh, a man who is not labeled, who cannot be labeled by the society because you never know where he's going to stand because he stands exactly where he wants to stand and not where you want him to stand. Omar would be, um, I would say, the synthesis of a lot of people living in Baltimore and um, people from the ghettos trying to survive their way and trying to be in control of their identity because being a black gay guy in the ghettos in America is uh, some, somehow living in a very hostile environment. And being very hostile environment, they have to respond to the environment very quickly. It means that these guys have to develop an ability to change their behavior all the time, every minute, every second. And they are very, they have this very particular ability to become, to be very flamboyant, to very masculine, to be very tough, to very gentle, to very masculine, to very flamboyant. And suddenly I realized that looking for Omar, I was more looking for this ability to switch the gender, the behavior, and to be free, to be exactly whatever you want, you control, to be exactly whatever you want to be at a certain moment of your life, in certain situations. And I was really astonished by this ability that I never found uh, in the white culture and that I never found in the French culture or the European culture either. And this is very particular, I think, to the African-American queer culture, I would say, but more, more generally in the African-American culture. And when you, you, you read James Baldwin, you have an idea of it. They ha you have to respond very quickly to the environment, to the dangers, or to what life has to offer you, if it's good or bad, if it's dangerous or not. Fred talked about how being a white French artist affected his introduction to Baltimore. When I arrived in Baltimore, because I was a French white artist, I was suddenly very quickly in, in contact with the I would say the, the white artistic culture of Baltimore. It was in May and I, I realized in the beginning of June, I realized that it was shifting by itself. Uh, I think when you are really convinced and you, are, you want to stand to a certain place, you, you get to this place. At a certain point I just decided that I have to give up all my artistic ideas or whatever and just being myself actually. And I was not looking for Omar, I was not looking for gay people, I was just looking for a free masculine body and the question was more general than this. And I began a series of men in high heels which are not only um, generally homosexual, it has nothing to do with the sexuality. 
but it was a per perfect metaphor of an oppressed body high heels uh, in a way if you consider it uh, as a fetishism or a way to for women to appear more beautiful and the black body in the American body in the American society is an oppressed body so the high heels were the perfect metaphor for it and suddenly having very masculine and tall and very tough or very thick or very beefy guys in high heels made some kind of a interesting thing when you have incredibly feminine legs and a very masculine, very masculine torso. And I began to ask men to pose for me with high heels and sport shorts actually. Just something very casual, you know, very, very neutral. This idea of, um, of men in high heels was inspired by someone I met who is very masculine and suddenly I realized he had high heels. He accepted just for one reason because he told me, he, he confessed later on to me that I was maybe the first person uh, not to consider him as feminine being in high heels or trying to label him, are you a drag, are you feminine, are you queenie, are you whatever you want to label it. I was the first person just to see something interesting in having high heels being a man. Uh, some of them are could be straight. I don't even know. They don't. They just don't have any problem with it because the metaphor of having high heels is more about the mixing between uh, femininity and masculinity, and everybody wears uh, is uh, possesses belong um, possesses these two parts, and it's also a metaphor. Uh, I realized that later of something that uh, obsessed me a lot for a long time. This mythologic. Uh, I don't know, half men, half animal figures. Uh, they are living in the forest, they are very sexual, they are neither mean nor good, they are doing tricks all the time. So the, the heels are more like the hooves of the fawn? Yeah, and fawns, fawns for me are very ambivalent. And I like this ambivalency in the way that uh, this society today asks us, each, each of us, to be clear, to be transparent. And there is no space anymore for um, people being ambivalent. Being ambivalent means that you cannot be really labeled. You cannot be really, you don't know exactly where you stand. You can be one thing at one moment and one other thing in, the, in, in two seconds later. And that's what I uh, observed and experienced in the black gay culture, but also in the black culture in the hoods, was this ability to change your behavior all the time. Fred hopes to return to the U.S. next year for residency with the Enfleur Gallery in Anacostia, a black neighborhood in Washington, D.C. Being in Anacostia, I would open up the work to any type of guys related to the street culture in general. Hip-hop, living in the hoods, living in the ghettos, masculine guys accepting to pose for me in high heels, not talking about sexuality, but just talking about this ability to respond to your environment. I'm always interested anywhere in the way subcultures can resist to the mainstream power and how it offers you um, some kind of a hope somewhere of something else existing, giving us the possibility to resist to the mainstream ideas or to the mainstream cultures. You've been listening to Art Talk with Frédéric Nozessil. Read more about Frédéric's work and hear other podcasts in the series at freshartinternational.com.